Hi, this is Steve from Red, White and Blue PH here again in the Philippines on a beautiful sunny afternoon. So I just want to give you the update on the GSX S1000 GT since I put 6,000 kilometers onto her. So why don't I take you straight into this and tell you what I think about this particular bike. Now one of the first things that grabbed me with the GSX-1000 GT is the look. I mean, when I walked into the showroom, it was the look of the bike because the bike was complete, for me, complete. Not overly lavish, not loads of graphics. The color was beautiful. The styling looked beautiful. And I thought to myself, that's a bike I want to try, but they wouldn't let me take it for a ride. So actually, I had to buy the bike before I got a chance to really ride the bike. But of course, I've been riding bikes similar over the years. But let's talk about this bike particularly. Now, what do I find great about this bike? This is not my first GSX. My first GSX was back in 1983. We've come a long way since then, from the GSX 250 to the GSX 1000 touring machine um, which is phenomenal uh, what a difference i mean if i go back in time what a difference bikes are today from what they were yesterday first things you notice with the gsx 1000 gt is is the sitting position the riding position and also the street presence of the bike now one thing i like because i've been riding adventure bikes uh, quite a lot over the last couple of years is it's so nice just to grab the front brake and throw my leg over and I'm on the bike. I'm not having to do this and then sit down. Your choice, but I particularly like it that I can just throw my leg straight over the bike and I'm on. So that's one of the first features I love. Let me show you also, now I'm just over six foot tall, so I know a lot of you are smaller riders. That is nothing to be concerned about with this particular bike. If I sit on this bike, I take it off its stand, both my feet are firmly on the ground with knee bend to spare. So if I was even shorter, both my feet can be on the ground. If I was really short, at least I'd have the sole of my foot on the ground. So that's a thumbs up for me. Very, very comfortable. What else I like about this bike is the weight ratio itself. The weight ratio is very, very low on the bike so when I take it out onto the country roads or I take it out onto the freeway, I can move this bike around so easily. It is so well balanced. Now something else that Suzuki got right for this bike and I wasn't first expecting it in all gears, one up to six, all the way down, as long as you're keeping your revs at 3000 revs a minute, is the quick shifter. It is seamless. Um, there's no clunk. There's no click. It's just plop, 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 plop. It's absolutely a beautiful gearbox on this particular machine in harmony with a four cylinder straight engine. This thing just hums along. It is effortlessly easy to ride. Now, I wouldn't say that it's a beginner's bike uh, because it is, of course, a 999cc, but it is definitely a bike for those people who are coming from say the 400 cc's or 500 up i would say this is a bike that you should seriously consider because you're not going to feel a lot of difference as in weight yes it's heavier but the weight distribution is absolutely perfect okay. now very similar to the ninjas i've had is the position of the mirrors not my favorite um, I do find them a little bit distant. I do find them a little bit small, but I've had no issues um, on the freeways uh, because I always turn my head before I shift lane. So as far as blind spots are concerned, uh, I managed to overcome that with uh, using my head and turning my helmet before I make a turn. So I've used that quite a lot, but I think the mirrors could be a little bit bigger, but that's not a real downside for the bike. I mean, it's streamlined. It looks good on the bike. so. I've got no problem with that. It gives you that kind of sporty look. The other thing which is, which is great and great upgrades to the bike. I mean, you've seen this on some other models of late, 
that is being able to change riding modes a b c now a if you want to be ultra aggressive it's not supposed to be aggressive but i call it aggressive this thing rides like a sports bike it will ride like a bat out of hell um and if you're experienced, I wouldn't suggest just pulling back on that throttle if not you're going to end up on the back seat or over the back. It is extremely fast in A mode. Actually, it's extremely fast in A, B or C, but it's the way it actually gets you to your speed that you're requiring. If I go into C mode, which is the more conservative for wet conditions and other, yes, this bike can still top out at its top speed, but the gear ratios, the way the engine is actually derived, it's going to get you there on a slower pace. It's going to get you there in a more controlled action. Unlike the A mode, for example, my preference is the B. I want to have the acceleration when I need the acceleration, but I also want to have the, the comfort as well that it's not overly aggressive. So B is absolutely perfect for me on this particular bike. The other great thing which they have on here is the LCD display. It's big, it's clear, it's bright, whether it's night or day or noon sunshine, it's extremely bright, which is adjustable. It gives you all the information you need. And if you download the application, uh, which connects to your cell phone, whether it be an Android or an iPhone, you can connect your phone directly to your instrument display and it will give you maps, telephone calls, and everything else you could possibly want, which you probably have in your car today, here on the bike. Personally, I do not use the maps. It's not my preference. I do not use the telephone app on the LCD display because, of course, I'm using my communication device. I use a cardio. I have that connected to my telephone and I listen to my navigation. I do not want to be sitting continually putting my head down looking at a map because I'm on two wheels and my eyes should be out there. I should be looking where I'm going. I shouldn't be constantly looking down at a map which is very very dangerous. The one thing that uh, Suzuki probably could have done because they have a real estate space here at the front of the bike is maybe moved the LCD display slightly higher. I do find in a riding position which would be something like this. This is how I sit. Um, I do tend that I have to look down because my helmet will come to here, which actually blocks my view of the instrument display. So I slide head down, back up. Now, all I really want to do is my, see is my speed and I want to see my fuel. Maybe have a look at the engine temperature. That's all I really need to know. But there's lots, lots more built into this. If you're a real techie kind of guy, that is a great instrument display, especially if you connect it with your smartphone as well. So how about some of the things that I do not like about the bike? Um, I wouldn't say I don't like them, just that I thought they were wrong and they could have done a better job, is number one is the headlights. Only one headlight comes on um, in your riding mode during the day. Only one headlight comes on riding at night. It's only when you put on your high beam does the second light come on. That creates problems for me because people keep flashing me as if to say, you've got one headlight broken. And it actually makes the bike look like you've got a broken headlight. So I actually got around that by installing some additional Denali lights on the front forks, which you'll see above, which give me that number one, the extra brightness I need for riding in the countryside where there's no light. And second to that, it also gives me plenty of visibility, even in sunshine. Believe it or not, uh, people are not looking for bikes, so I want to be seen. I want to be bright, I want to be coming up behind them, so I put the additional lights on the front, but I also put the additional lights on the back of the bike, which I'll show you just up here. So I put in some Denali D7 brake lights, and I also put in a flasher onto the rear brake light. Why did I do that? Again, I want to be seen. When I'm on the freeway, people tend to, no matter how much I try and avoid it, they really ride up close behind you and then suddenly traffic will come to a quick stop. When I hit my brake lights, or I just trigger my brake lights to tell the car to back off maybe, it's extremely bright. When I do brake, the flash, 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 
and the Denali light coming on very bright really does help so far and believe me I have had some emergency stop situations on this bike countless times which brings me to another very important point about this bike my first impressions when I picked it up from the dealership of course when you're coming from different bikes you're used to a certain feel was the brakes and I thought they were a bit soft but now I've got used to riding her over the last 6,000, actually 6,000 plus kilometers, the brakes are fantastic, especially with the ABS. I've had to do emergency stops where I've had livestock run out in front of me when I've been doing a fair speed. I've had to do emergency stops when uh, suddenly the truck in front of me locks up all of its rear brakes on its trailer, smoke pouring into my face. And then I make my exit plan and I pull down on the front brake slowly and this thing will stop on a dime. It will stop very, very fast. Now, I'm not telling you that you can go at 150 kilometers an hour, slam on this front brake and you're not going to slide. No, 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 no. If you do it correctly and don't panic and just slide the brake lever in, this bike will stop very, very quickly so that has been a real plus i'm not going to go into the rear brake had no issues with it at all but i rely more on my front brake because that's where most of my braking actually comes from so what have i done to this bike to make it more me of course i put the accessory tank bag on there um, i can change that in and out i do not want to put the panniers onto the bike i think it will take away the sports look of the bike yes it's still a touring bike but I wear a backpack, I can have a day bag or an overnight bag for the tank. So that helps me tremendously. Uh, I've seen a lot of people change out the front screen, the windscreen into a dark tint. I like to have the view clear through the screen. So at least I can see potholes when I'm doing low speeds and in tight traffic. So anyway, that's people's own opinion, what they want to do with that particular bike. And of course, just the mounts for your telephone, for your GoPros or whatever other devices you want to use on the bike. Also, I added some sliders. Why do I add the sliders? Is because if the bike falls over because somebody whacks into it in a parking lot, I don't have to pay the damage on the tank and all the fairings on the bike. The only thing that's going to get damaged is the end of the slider and maybe the back foot peg and the end of the handlebar. That's it, not the complete side of the bike. So a great extra to put on your bike, inexpensive, easily available online or at a recognized motorcycle accessory store. Now, another thing which is a bit of an issue for me, and I don't quite understand why this happens. Um, I can't believe it's just unique to me, is the fuel gauges on the bike. There's two. There is one which is an analog fuel gauge, which kind of basically goes down showing you a line, curved line, uh, the amount of fuel you use, or it will give you your estimated distance until you need to refuel. Both of them don't work properly. When I say they don't work properly, yes, they'll go down. I know when I need to get gas. But for example, the analog or digital analog will go from full tank, three quarters of a tank, half a tank, then just below empty. There's no gradual decline in the line, doesn't happen. When you first power up your bike, you may have parked it, you've got 187 kilometers until your next fuel change, but then in the morning you, you fire it up and it says 80 kilometers range. And you go, okay, that's a, a quite a big jump. Now, I do expect when the computer resets that it's going to hopefully remember what it finished on and maybe depending on your riding style adjust slightly maybe by 20 40 kilometers but not by half but then after you start riding for about five minutes or 10 minutes suddenly boom you're back up to 100 um, estimated of course depending on what speed you're doing but it's very inconcisive uh, i think it could be a bit more accurate so that's something which suzuki can definitely work on for future models now i do a lot of freeway riding and uh, i have used the cruise control on the bike faultless absolutely faultless uh, if I set it to 110 kilometers an hour it just sits there at 110 give or take one kilometer as you're going up or down hills slight slight gradient but it's been absolutely perfect love that 
The other thing I love with the Suzuki is the one push start. Not push, hold, click, 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 starts, no. Just boom, start straight away. So far, start straight away every single time. Very, very happy with that. Um, as far as the passengers concerned, or your pillion passenger, seat a little bit small. If they call this a Tora, sports Tora, I think this seat is going to be a bit small for your pillion passenger. Um, if you look at the actual size of the seat itself, it's that big and it's that wide. Mm. I don't think any pillion passenger is going to be too happy sitting on a seat of that size doing six to seven hours, maybe nine hours in a day. Now I've said this once before, it's a sports tourer. Can I tour on this bike? Absolutely. I can tour on all the major roads, some of the B roads. Uh, I would never consider taking this off onto dirt tracks or onto heavy gravel or sand. Absolutely not. This bike is not made for it. But once the bike is loaded up, if you want to put your pillion boxes on, or you want to carry straps or backpacks and what have you, you can do some kilometers on this. This is not a bike which I would take out for a week's ride or maybe two weeks, uh, no. Um, I'd have to load this up with uh, so many other boxes, I think it would take away the beauty of the bike itself. So overall, my impression of this particular bike, I am in love with this bike. I think this bike can do so many things. I think it is so versatile. I believe that Suzuki have done so many things right. I'm glad that they've kept the GSX brand alive and also the Sports Tourer brand alive. This for me, from the color to the overall shape of the bike to the way it handles, it is perfect for me. And maybe it's perfect for you as well if you're thinking about moving up to a higher CC and a bike which can give you pretty much everything unless you want that true off-road adventure. But I myself, I have another bike for that. Uh, it's not this bike. This bike is my riding between here and different cities and doing, even yesterday, doing close to 700 kilometers yesterday on this bike. So yes, I'm truly in love with it. Wonderful machine. I get great mileage per gallon or per litre, and I believe this is a bike that I'm going to be using for the next coming years and have tremendous fun on this. The only issue I actually had is I've had three nails in the front tyre, and I've just noticed I've also got a screw in the back tyre. So my luck with nails and screws and galvanising the tyres has not been so good. But hey, that's riding, and that's why you always carry your emergency repair kit with you. I always do in my tank bag. But anyway guys, thanks for tuning in. I just wanted to give you an update on the GSX 1000 GT. Wonderful machine. Suzuki, you've done a fantastic job and I look forward to many, many more kilometers of fun every time I start this engine. All right, to all of you, stay safe, ride safe and ciao for now.